I'm back. Oh, I'm back. Back to fight the evil. I will never deceive you. Okay, I may in fact deceive you at some point, but yes, it's on again with a brand new edition of I Played a Thing. Sorry for the wait, but it's been a brutally busy week out here, and I reckon I could have done with a break after East anyway. That said, I'm finally seeing some daylight, so it is the 90s and there is time for Klax. I mean 2008, and time for Rivers of Light. But un, you say? Rivers of Light? Your traditional title screen still says Adventure Construction Set. Well, thereby hangs a tale which I will attempt to keep as brief as possible. Adventure Construction Set pretty much does what it says on the tin. It was a program for designing top-down graphical adventure games with a big library of pre-made tiles and objects, plus the ability to create new ones. It was designed by Stuart Smith, best known for Return of Heracles, and published for the Apple II and Commodore 64 by Electronic Arts uh, back in the day before they became the Tiger Madden Major League NHL Soccer Sausage Factory we so adore today, in 1985. 1986 brought on an Amiga port, which will be the subject of this iPad. Adventure Construction said included two sample games, one being uh, Land of Adventuria, which was pretty much a straight-up tutorial, and the other being Rivers of Light, a complete game by Smith and a showpiece for what could be accomplished with ACS. Rivers is brief and fairly primitive by today's standards, but I still consider it a standout for its writing, unique atmosphere, and for how well-researched it is. The story focuses on your search for eternal life in the ancient Fertile Crescent, with a strong grounding in Sumerian, Akkadian, and Egyptian mythology, particularly the Epic of Gilgamesh. Well then, you've listened to me spout background for long enough, so let's stir us up a Mesopotamia. Okay, let's get this thing loaded up. Shouldn't take but a moment, I have the uh, drive emulation speed turned up, which is something that's rather nice about this uh, particular Amiga port. It seems to emulate the drive a little more stably than the Apple and C64 versions. Rivers of Light by Stuart Smith, an ACS production. Good times. Are we each destined to live for one brief lifetime? Can any person live eternally, or live again? There are some in the old worlds of Babylonia and Egypt who profess to know these answers. You may meet them on your own quest for eternal life. Alright, now we have to create a character. And one thing that's pretty funny about any ACS created game is that you can use any tile in the entire graphics set to represent yourself. From the perfectly sensible to the ridiculous. Uh, yes, you can be represented by furniture, terrain, all sorts of strange things. Well, that's a good one. Uh, let's see what else we've got here, though. There's a particular tile I am looking for. Haha, <laughs> yes. Let's be fire. In both appearance and name. And fire is now in the Fertile Crescent. That green bar on the left is our movement. That's how much we can move in one turn. And power on the right hand side is uh, our MP. And life, of course, is our health. So we can move around the world map and go into any of these various places, but the only location we can reach right now, as far as I know, is the Ancient Valley. At the bottom of the screen you'll see the current uh, region, which is Ancient Valley, and in the upper right of the status area you see the current room, which is River Valley. So let's roll on up here and grab ourselves a flint knife. It's a terrible weapon, but better than fighting bare hand. And any time we can pick, we can pull up a menu of options. Let's go in here and see what's up. You can see that the cave you are entering is well kept, with many dried herbs stored in clay bowls and reed baskets. A kindly, wise-looking woman is standing in a corner next to her table, humming a cheerful tune that sounds familiar. Well, hello, nice lady. So you seek eternal life, says the medicine woman. Do you not know that after each winter the spring comes again? If you drop an animal bone on my table, I will happily make you an image of the Great Mother so you will never forget her. Okay. If we bring a bone back here, we can get a statue of the Mother. Worth knowing. 
Okay, that's a rock, which is the worst projectile weapon, but any projectile weapon is better than none. Combat isn't generally a huge deal in this game. Uh, it can be lethal, but it's usually short. I hope you are enjoying our exploration, or your exploration of our little valley here. We have some of the best healing salve around. Just drop a little of our rich red soil on a wounded friend, and he's sure to be grateful. In our hut, in my hut here, I'm offering a few valley goods. Well, I'm not going to bother checking out the store uh, because I have no money, but we'll be back there later. Or actually, we may not. There's not a whole lot in this game that you can buy that you can't get for free, so I don't tend to spend too much time with the shops. What's this guy have to say? I have lost my statue of the Mother Goddess, says the hunter. Please, if you give me another, I will reward you. Uh, worth knowing, because we have a place to get a statue of the Mother Goddess. We just need a bone. And in here we will find one, in grain storage. Uh, taking grain is not all that... Oh, we are being attacked by a feral rat. These guys really aren't worth fighting, so I'm not going to bother unless they get in my way. Uh, as I was saying, taking grain, uh, there's not much point. It's kind of a waste of inventory space. Uh, right now I just need to get it out of the way. Ah, a pile of bones. A large skeleton, bleached white from age, lays here. You successfully free one of the larger bones from the pile. Fire takes large bone. Excellent. That's just what we needed. Yeah, you can sell grain for a little bit of money, but it's really not worth much, and money isn't all that valuable in the game anyway. Uh, some monsters, as you can see, will attack each other. So while those rats are busy tearing each other up, I'm going to get out of here. And soon I will be taking that bone back to the medicine woman to get her to make me a statue, so I can take that back to the hunter. But there's one stop I want to make first. Here's Bear Valley, which uh, contains, as you can see, a bear. Uh, bears are kind of unpredictable. They may attack you and they may not. So hopefully this one will leave us alone. And here we have some honey trees. And honey comes big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not small. No, no, no. Uh, you can sell the honeycomb for a fairly respectable amount of money, but I doubt I'm going to bother with that. We're actually going to be needing one for a uh, you know, a little sub-quest in the not-too-distant future, so I'm hanging on to that. Ow! Asshole. Well, this bear seems intent on chasing me, but I'm really not going to waste my time fighting with it. Unless I really have to. Hey, piss off, why don't you? I'm missing almost half my life already. Oh, wrong way. That's right, Bear. Stay right there where I don't have to deal with you. Uh, life will gradually restore over time, or you can use rest from the command menu to uh, use your um, movement points and uh, get it back faster. I'm in no immediate danger, so I'm just going to go with the flow for now. Let that bear screw around pointlessly on the other side of the river. We've seen that message before. Uh, ACS does not include a mechanic for directly handing things to people, so usually you'll see something like this, where you have to, you know, drop an item on them, or drop the object on a table of theirs. So we're going to drop that large bone on her table here. The medicine woman seems to work new life into the old bone you brought her, as she carves it into shape with a variety of sharp pieces of flint. Finally, she reverently offers the statue of the Mother Goddess to you. Life is ever reborn anew. Cool, we've got a goddess statue. Well, yellow pixel nipples. Time to take the statue back to the guy who needs it. Unfortunately, I'll have to dance around the bear again when I get over there, from all appearances. But such is life. Come on, bear, get, don't get in my way. And right back he goes toward the place I need to go. Great. 
Ah, and a troll appears. Uh, trolls are openly hostile. They will attack you given half a chance. But hopefully I won't have to spend too much time on him. Okay, so now we drop our statue on the hunter. The hunter says, I could catch no game without the goddess, so all I can offer you in thanks is my skill in swimming. How can I swim? I'm a fire! Anyway, uh, that's about all the time I've got for this particular edition of I Played a Thing. So, next time we continue our quest, will fire become an eternal flame? We'll find out in the future. Until then, I'm on. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you soon.